and we are in line 10. Because of your indignation and your wrath, for you have lifted up and cast me away. And then so that indignation is boiling wrath against something sinful. And so because of your boiling wrath and your wrath, so he has God has boiling wrath against something sinful and and wrath, all right, for you have lifted me up and cast me away. Um for you have lifted me up and cast me away. And so basically he probably had sinned or something like that, and feeling that God had uh cast him away, lift him up and cast him away. And then eleven, my days are like a shadow that lengthen lengthens. And I wither away like grass. All right. And so he's saying that his days are like a shadow. There's not like uh, the re reality or, or the physicalness of his days. It's just a shadow. And then he's saying that he also wither away like grass. And like, you know, we read that in the Psalms, how, you know, you grow up today and you get cut down tomorrow. 12, but you, O Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations. You will rise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come for your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust. So the nation shall Fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory. For the Lord shall build up Zion, for he shall appear in his glory. He shall regard the prayer of the destitute and shall not despise their prayer. And so let's go back to 12 and elaborate. But you, Lord, you, but you, O Lord, shall endure forever. So that a part of 12 it's telling us that what I may be cut down and wither away like grass, but God is going to stand forever. Praise God. So he's saying, but you, O Lord, shall endure forever and the remembrance of your name to all generations. And so everybody, every generation is going to remember the name of the Lord because he's the one who's going to last forever. 13, you will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, a set time has come. And so he's saying that God is going to rise and give uh, Zion uh, something that they don't deserve for the time to favor her. Yes, it said time has come. So it's saying the time for God to show that favor against Zion, against, you know, in this aspect, it's talking about um, Israel for the time to favor her. Yes, the time has come. 14, for your servants take pleasure in her stones and show favor to her dust so for your servants take pleasure in her stones you know the things that have been built up and show favor to her dust so the nations shall fear the name of the lord 15 so the nations shall fear the name of the lord and all the kings of the earth your glory so the Gentiles shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth, your glory. And so, and that sends us to 1 Kings 8.43. That says, Here in heaven your dwelling place and do according to all which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel, and that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. And so that sends us back to Psalm 102.15 where we just come from. That sent us here. But it also sends us to 1 Samuel 17.46. Let's that says, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you, strike you and take your head from you, and this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And so this is just uh, corroborating about God. There's a God in Israel. 
And so this is David, uh, what he was, t uh, what he, how he went up against Goliath. And it just goes to show us whether we're facing the Goliath or where we face it, whether we're facing our own overwhelming um, situation, that there is a God that's right there. And he's not just in Israel. He's in America. He's in, you know, wherever you are and you trust and believe in him, God is right there. And so we don't have to fear, we don't have to worry, and we don't have to be afraid because God is there with us. And he can help us take care of the Goliaths in our lives. Praise God. And so, let's see. And that was, um, so let's go ahead and pause here and then we'll pick it up in line 16.